Hey everyone, welcome in. This is Julie Max from the Main Stamper. It is eight o'clock here on the East Coast and it's Monday evening. That means it's time for your card class from Maine. Make sure you're saying hi as you jump on. I'd love to know that you can see me and hear me and that you're watching with me and I will answer your questions as I can. I always check the comments after my lives just because once I get over to my project, I'm really not looking too much at the computer. But let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're watching replay. And also if you're on YouTube, say hey, cause I am adoring all my fans over on YouTube as well. So tonight's class is gonna be awesome. It's going to be the beauty of the deep. So. This is our stamp set, and as you can see, it's very nautical in nature. It has like the seaweeds, the grasses, it's got fish and an anchor, and actually my favorite stamp isn't even using my cards tonight. I didn't even use my favorite stamp. You know why? Because it, it would just be so easy to use my favorite stamp. So we'll talk about that a little bit as we get going. But this is Beauty of the Deep. It is a nautical themed class. But our cards, these are the backs of our card bases. You may see some colors here that maybe you're not thinking they're very nautical in nature. And they're really not. I kind of took this class in a different direction. Now the first card is most nautical. And after that, we're gonna get into a feminine card and we're going to get into like a kid-friendly card. And when I first looked at the Beauty of the Deep stamp set, I didn't really think anything other than nautical masculine cards because that's really where this set looks like it would be the easiest way to go so linda's on hi linda thanks for loving the theme it is a great theme all right so now that i know that i am live everything seems to be good i'm going to pop over to my workspace we're going to talk a little bit about this bundle we're going to get into our cards for tonight i'm going to reveal them one at a time so you gotta stay tuned and check them all out all right so here we go to the workspace so the beauty of the deep bundle is found on page 112 of the annual catalog and again, this is a very nautical themed stamp set. It's got the, sea, again, seaweeds, grass, grasses, fish. I mean, I love this fish, really cute fish. Some splotchies, there's a little sea urchin here, super cute. Now this is a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reveal here. These are the three stamps that I did not use. This is a red rubber cling stamp. I did not use the anchor and this is my favorite stamp in this entire set and I didn't use it. I didn't use it. I didn't use the splotchies, I almost did, and I didn't use that smaller um, little seaweed. But we're using the rest of them tonight. And of course there are coordinating dies. Now most of the dies are going to cut out all of the images. In fact, there is a die for every image in the stamp set. And then there's bonus dies. There's this big one right here that almost looks like a deciduous tree. And then there's two smaller seaweed type dies for your background um, as you're going along with the stamp set. It's a great bundle. Um, again, it's on 112. And when you buy the bundle, you're always saving instantly 10%, which is really nice. Now there are quite a few samples in the catalog. My class doesn't really look anything at all like the samples. So this is the class Beauty of the Deep. It is good through this week if you wanna place an order using my host code W3WKPK9U. $35 order is going to get you the card kits. So card kits come to you in the mail. You get two of each design. And here's, here's what the card kits look like in case you're like, what do these cards look like today? So we have the more masculine colors here. We have, this is gonna be the kid-friendly ones. You can see some really bright, fun colors there. And a lot of white in that one too. It's kind of a simple card. This one is going to be our feminine card. So these are definitely not maybe nautical themed colors. You're looking at these and going, what are we making tonight? So those are the card kits. Um, when you bump up your order to $50, I'm sending you this uh, loose silver sequins. We're going to be using these tonight. Now, there's a ton of embellishments in here. There's silver. Some of them are more opaque. They're not adhesive backed, but you get, does this say 1,700? 1,200. Eyesight problem here. Um, there's 1,200 little sequins in this this little container and you do have to glue them to your card but they're really worth it they're fantastic i'm using these on my card all three of my cards and um, that is your freebie with a 50 dollars order if you're spending more than 150 you're your own host don't use my code just be your own host get some free items i'm still going to send you the card kits and the embellishments if you have any questions on that you can certainly ask now you may have noticed in the beauty of the deep stamp set this is all images there's not one single sentiment zero sentiments and i really thought about not putting any sentiments on my card but then i thought why not put something on my card right so i went to the go to greetings and this is a really fantastic set this also is the red rubber i don't have them all mounted yet so the red rubber cling now here's what's fun about this there are three different font styles 
and there's uh, happy birthday thinking of you just a note and thank you in each of those font styles there's also a small hello so you've got just a note just a note just a note so different sizes different fonts it's fantastic this covers pretty much anything you might want to make a card for right thinking of you could be a sympathy card a get well card just a note you know saying hello thank you happy birthday these are really great sentiments so i'm com i'm combining these today for this card class. So I just wanted to point that out. And I'm going to use different sentiments, sizes, and verbiage in each of the cards. So let's talk about the cards. We're going to get into our first card kit right here. So in your card kit, you get two envelopes, two card bases, and everything is cut for you. So you don't have to think about it. You just assemble. And if you don't have Beauty of the Deep, you can use whatever you have at home. I've seen some very clever card kits being put out there lately. You pop over to Positive Paper Crafters. Um, it is a group that I run. And oh my gosh, it's so awesome that you guys are sharing your card kit creations. And they look fantastic. It's amazing what you guys come up with to substitute in, swap around. I just absolutely adore it. All right, so I'm just pulling out one of each for this card, um, one of each item that's in here. And we're going to put this one together. Together. Now, I do have um, a card base that's scored and ready to go. This is Pebbled Path. So we're kind of focusing on the ink colors, and I didn't do it on purpose, but when I started out with this, um, this, these kits today and started designing, I, I just kind of went toward the in colors. Hi, Patty. Glad to see you here. Thanks for jumping on and saying hi. All right, so we're going to put the bones together first before, before I even show you all of, the, all of the card here. Now, this, of course, this is um, paper that's going to be from the let's go fishing or gone fishing I can never remember it um, and I wanted to point out that this paper right here is a map or a chart as my husband would say every time I call them maps he's like those those are charts Julie those are charts um, this would also look really awesome on your card quick sip of water <clears throat> so I designed the card to have the blue side up I did not design the card to have the fishing poles up however it will work that way if you want them to go that way but I like the gray netting here. It works really well with, if I can pick this up, works really well with our card theme. So I'm going to center this designer paper right here on the strip. Now this is very vanilla. I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up and it looks white, but it is very vanilla. Um, these little pieces right here are vanilla rather than white, just so you're aware. In case you get these at home, you're like, what? My paper is not white. Nope, it is vanilla. So I'm just going to check to see <clears throat> which side I like better for the front. Because sometimes when you fold it, there's like a little gap. And I always put the short side to the back, right? We want the front side to be pretty. Also, you want to keep in mind as you're assembling your card, which way it opens. Now, I just layered this on here. And it's just gorgeous already, right? And I layered it so that you could have like little steps here from pebbled path to vanilla to the designer paper. So they kind of come up and around. No dimensionals were needed for that. Now this one I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm going to I'm gonna do the opposite side today. Now in my sample I used the blue. But I'm going to just go opposite. I frequently do this during my live cards. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not sure if I'm going to love it or not. But as you're looking at this, this pretty much is the bones of your card. Now when I say the bones of your card, you could take this right now and you could create anything. Whether you use the rest of the pieces or not. But we are using the rest of the pieces. So... Again, I'm gonna just put this down um, flat. I didn't, I didn't feel the dimensionals today. I didn't use a lot of dimensionals in my cards. I just went with lots of layers and I just kept putting them down thinking, okay, this will be a little easier to mail if it's not too puffy. So there we have it. This is again, bones of the card. We're gonna do a little stamping, a little die cutting on these three papers. And then we're gonna have our, our uh, finished product so this fun stamp right here this is a pretty good size stamp we are stamping this in boho blue ink on a piece of boho blue cardstock i'm going to go this way i'm going to go sideways just a little bit make sure we get all inked up here i think my boho blue is extra inky right now and we're gonna pop that down on there and get a really nice image look how gorgeous that is i am a fan of tone on tone um ink with paper especially when you're die cutting it I just feel like it comes out so much nicer now we're going to use the pebbled path ink next and we're going to stamp on our little sentiment piece for this one I chose thank you because I thought that would be 
just a really nice little sentiment here for our card. Now this is Pebbled Path Ink again, very vanilla cardstock here. And I'm gonna put this over more toward the right. I give you a bigger piece so that you can do something with it if you choose to, but look how gorgeous that script is. I just love, I am a fan of fonts. I'm just gonna say, I think I need that on a t-shirt. I am a fan of fonts. This is just beautiful to me. Like it's just, I have terrible handwriting. Um, if I send out a thank you card and you see something that's typed and I scratch a note on it, it's, I type it because I have terrible, I'm gonna repeat that, I have terrible handwriting but I like to say words, so I'll have to type them up sometimes and then I add like extra little notes. All right, so I am bringing in the dies and we have this fun die, which I talked about earlier. That's gonna go on the Smoky Slate. Now this is Smoky Slate cardstock. And then this big die right here is going to die cut out our lovely image just like this. And because I worked on these earlier, I have die cut out this image. And in my little dish here, I just gotta find my other image. So here it is. Let me put that aside. So I just wanted to show you that you're going to be stamping on those, die cutting those, um, and if you don't have this set, <clears throat> you're doing other fun things with it instead. Let me set that aside. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about sponging because sponging is awesome. Adding more ink is always awesome, right? So I'm going to bring in both of my Boho Blue and my Pebbled Path. For the boho blue, I'm going to use a sponge dauber and I'm going to show you that I'm going to just come around the outside of this image that's been die cut, stamped and die cut. I'm just going to add ink to the edges and I'm just kind of deepening the outside here <coughs> as we go. So I'm not really going in too far, I'm just staying on the outside edge. It just kind of draws, you know, makes it more bold right around the edges and just kind of covers those spots where maybe the ink doesn't go. So I like to do that. That's the outside around the edges. A little bit of sponging there. Now I'm going to bring this smoky slate <clears throat> piece of sea matter, right? Seaweed, I guess we want to call it. Um, it's just very flat and one dimensional, but I'm going to bring in Pebble Path. Now Pebble Path is a lot darker than smoky slate and I'm going to bring in a dauber and I'm not going to do the outside edges, but I am going to just use the dauber and I'm just going to dab a little bit around. I'm not even covering all of it, but look how it brings it to life. It's got multiple colors. You could even, I think it would be great if you added a little bit of green here. I only added the one color here, but you can see how the dauber splotches and it just looks perfect um, for this little seaweed that we've got going on. All right, so now I'm going to just trim the edge of my sentiment a little bit here. So I'm going to just cut both of these kind of just notch the ends a little bit, get that little curve. It's not a curve, it's it's um, an angle. I like to do the angles on there. It's just so much easier than trying to punch, you know, fussy cut a little banner, what have you. All right, so now we're gonna bring in the final elements here of our cards. We've got our beautiful seaweed. I love the boho blue here with the pebbled path. Um, if I didn't mention it, this background piece was misty moonlight. So there are two blues here, just like there's more grit, there's more, there's two blues, there's two grays. So we're kind of, we're creating a nice little palette here. So it's not completely monotone, but the card does look a little bit like um, it has different color variations of similar colors. So on the back of this seaweed sprig, I'm just gonna dot some glue here, only toward the, you know, maybe the bottom half or so. And I'm gonna layer this up here like this. So you might think, oh, that one should go in front, but that one's actually gonna go behind and this one's gonna go in front. So again, I'm going to keep everything flat. This is where I stamped earlier and it didn't come out all the way. So I turned my paper over since it's two sided and I stamped it again. So I even, you know, in my craft room, not always perfect here. So we're just going to go ahead and glue this one down. And so again, flat applications today. And even the sentiment I'm going to put on here flat. Now I'm trying to think. I could see I could angle this differently this time. I'm playing here for a minute. No, I'm gonna put it up similar to how I had it last time. So again, flat, flat. This is gonna be an easy card to pop into the mail. I'm gonna put this right over here. Maybe up just a smidge. A nice little thank you card, right? And before I put on the embellishments, I am gonna bring in my original. So as promised, I did create this card with 
the blue. So you can see the blue designer paper here, and I would love to know which one you prefer. And you get to look at these for a minute because I'm going to add in some of these little loose sequins. Now, these ones do have to go, and you're going to want the putty end of your take your pick tool makes it super easy and a little bit of glue and I'm just going to pull a few out of here and just kind of sprinkle them in Let's see how many did I get I think I have three there I think I have a lot of clear ones down here up here okay so the clear ones are really hard to see I'm going to flip them over so they're going in the right directions I'm going to put three on top three over here toward the bottom kind of just random patterns I think that one I dropped is some of these are super tiny these would be great, obviously, in a shaker card because they are a little fussy to work with. I'm going to get rid of that super tiny one. All right, so how I put these on is I grab, I put them basically where I want them to go. I'm going to pick them up with my take your pick tool one at a time, put a little bit of glue down, and then come back in. So the sequin is on the end of my putty there. I'm just going to pop that on, and that one is done. So I'm going to pick this one up, put a little drop of glue, pop this on. The glue will take a little bit to dry. It'll also look like really, um, obviously the glue comes out white. So for a little bit, it looks a little funny till it dries clear. And if you have like a thin glue that you can use, one of those little um, bottles that has a tiny applicator, this would be a great one for that too. So I'm just picking them up again, putting them down. It's not super difficult. It's easier with the tool. I use the spatula end to kind of push it down off my finger, especially as my fingers get sticky from the glue. So just pop that back on there. Make sure you got them going in the right direction. There it is. Pop that down. So I'll take the spatula end and I'll kind of push it down as I pull my finger up and out of the way. I already have one stuck to my finger now. Look at this. We're going to just grab that right off of there. Pop it down there. Make sure it's going to stay. We're not going to use that tiny one. And there we go. So it just gives a nice little sparkle. These also, speaking of flat and mailing, right? These are easy to mail. They don't bump up like all the embellishments that have all the adhesive on the back. So this is a look at our first card. So you can use the chart paper, you can use the water paper, and I just really love this color combination together. This one is, again, this one is going to be the most nautical of our cards tonight. So I'm just gonna pop over and check messages real quick. And as I do, I'm looking at the picture of my my, uh, cards and I absolutely love this. Hi Sandra. Hi Bonnie. Oh, she loves it. Hi Jess. Oh, Jess's son is leaving for Ohio tomorrow. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. Jess, you're, you're a great mama. Hi Debbie. Oh, thanks. Yeah. My glue holder. I did get that. Um, liking the white background. Oh, nice. I did get my little glue holder um, at a rubber stamp convention. I think you can find these on eBay too. Um, it's almost like they 3D print these. Mine, of course, has lots of glue in it, but um, it is fantastic because I, you know, I keep it in here. I keep it upside down and um, I just have to remember to cover my glue up when I'm not working on it for too long at a time. Okay, so there is card number one and that one is done. We're going to move on to card number two now. Card number two. This one, oh my gosh, this one is so awesome because it is so not nautical. Like, right? I totally made not nautical colors here. Let me get rid of some of my ink pads and things out of the way. I feel like I have blue on my fingers. So you're looking at these colors and you're like, whoa, how, how are we using seaweed and fish on this card, right? I hope that's what you're thinking. This is Blackberry Bliss, Moody Mauve. Ooh, cascading ruffles. We're gonna talk about cascading ruffles. So you're getting an embossed piece. You're getting some die cut pieces. This is a specialty. I hope you can see the luster on this. This is like a luster Moody Mauve uh, die cut with a little stitches bubble bath. Um, you're getting, I'm just separating here. So you're getting all these parts and pieces to create the second card. This one, I just love these rich regal colors together so much. And then I need to pull in my card base, which I have already scored. So again, we have a nice Blackberry Bliss card base. So let me grab my paper here because we're going to work on this little moody mauve piece here. Now, I wanted to show you, I need to get set up here for this card. This one, oh, this one's going to have a little heat embossing. This one's a fancy card. We're going fancy for this one. Let me grab out some of my things here my bucket behind me the bucket behind me which I dumped upside down earlier so now I think there's probably dog hair on everything okay I did clean I recleaned my stamps because dog hair and everything hit the floor I can't believe I dumped it so Moody Mauve ink and this is 
before. This is a little heavy, okay? So here's the difference between before and heavy ink, although I kind of like it. We're gonna try to do a little bit lighter. So this is Moody Mauve. I want the Moody Mauve brush. This one is my Moody Mauve. I do have them labeled so I can remember what to use where. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink on here and I'm going to very lightly. So when I'm heavy, this is what happens, right? I put that on there and went, whoa, okay. So this time I'm just gonna do, oh, I kind of probably should have started off a little bit, a little bit lighter. We're gonna, we're gonna try to go for a little bit lighter here. So I'm not gonna push down as hard. I'm not gonna re-ink as much. And hopefully this one will be a little bit lighter. I did kind of get a little bit heavy in a couple spots here, but you're gonna, you really see the ruffles. Um, you really can see the ruffles. So again, this is, let me grab my my undone one, right? So we've got really like no ink, lighter ink, darker ink. So you can see that really no two cards are probably gonna be the same because it's so easy to mix up your inks like that. All right, so for this card again, we're using some really fun colors. We've got Bubble Bath, Moody Mauve, Blackberry Bliss. So you've got this piece right here, this very narrow piece of the bubble bath. I'm going to flip my card over. So this is my card stock. And I'm going to, if I put it on my card this way, I'm just going to put a little bit of um, adhesive here up and down the side on the back, flip it over, and then I'm going to adhere it to this piece of bubble bath. And I'm just basically matting this piece to the outside edge so that I have this beautiful surround and once I put it down on the Blackberry Bliss it really brightens the card up so you can see how much brighter this looks if I had just taken my card base and I just put down this layer which is really dark anyway right there's it's just really dark and deep even if it wasn't sponged it's still really dark and deep right but by adding that little bit of bubble bath right there it just pops this card why it's just beautiful it just adds so much light to it so I'm just adding that tiny little strip right there and it's easier to do it this way than put um, the adhesive on the bubble bath and and line that up but this is now going to go on our card but our card base just flat because as mentioned earlier not using a lot of dimensionals today lately I've been using a lot of dimensionals and for some reason I just I'm thinking flatter cards for today. So again, I'm just gonna put this on here. The bubble bath will be on the left as we go across, right? So it's gonna open this way. So isn't that pretty already? Now let's do, uh, let's do up some more bones of our card here. So you're getting this, um, these are really great. I love the stylish shapes dies. This one we have to do, do a little fancy work on. But let's do some stamping on our pink bubble bath circle die here. So I'm going to bring in bubble bath. So again, tone on tone. I'm going to find now this, this is interesting, right? So this is again, kind of that, um, the coral reef, right? The coral type um, of stamp here for our, our image. And I'm just going to just kind of do some background stamping here, but all over. So I'm going to just kind of continue to, I think about four yeah, maybe I can sneak, so it's one of those things, right? Where you're like, I can sneak in a little something right there, right there. So we're basically just kind of giving this, um, it's almost like a camouflage look, right? We've, we've got a little bit of, of ink on there and we're going to come in with the um, bubble bath sponge and we're just gonna come around the outside of the circle. Now this bubble bath ink is so light. Like it, sometimes you have to really apply heavily to get it to look like there's actually a transfer of the ink. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to be too heavy with it. I'm just gonna go around the outside edges here a little bit and I can see it on the white paper that's behind me. So I know that some ink is coming out of here, even though it just, it looks really light. But I just wanted to deepen down the stitched lines. I'm leaving the image like that just perfectly as it is. Okay, we're gonna pop this on our card next. We're gonna layer these two together. So again, this is that Luster Specialty Paper. Comes in the current in colors. The, the brand new, I, I should say this year. So it's 2023, 2025 in colors. And we're gonna just put these two together with some adhesive, right? So we're just layering those two together. And then this circle set is gonna go onto our card base. 
also flat. So I know it's probably like, you're like, wow, nothing is getting dimensionals today. Um, oh, and then you want to see which way do you want this to go up? There kind of is an orientation. I'm going to keep it going in the upward direction there. And we're going to pop that on there. So here we have really pretty much the bones of your card. Now, if you had stamped this or left this in a, in a different um, pattern, this is what you got, right? So you've got a couple more pieces here that are going to go on here. And let's talk about some heat embossing. So we're using this beautiful, I love this stamp. It's very long and elegant. And we're going to use the very fancy Just a Note. Now, this is the fanciest of the fonts from our go-to greetings. So you can see that these ones right here, super fancy, super scripty fancy. And then these ones are a little bit more cutesy, um, but this is the most elegant. So we're gonna, we're gonna do, because this is kind of an elegant looking card, we're gonna stay elegant with this one and we're gonna do some heat embossing. So let me go ahead and prep my cardstock with my emboss buddy and make sure I'm prepping the right side of my sentiment piece because the stitching looks really pretty on one side and on the other side not quite so much all right so of course we're bringing in gold embossing powder because i felt like the gold would be the richest to go with these gorgeous colors so i'm going to go ahead and ink these up with my versamark ink pad and this is going to go right on here get the lid out of the way there we go that would be helpful Okay, so that's on there. This is gorgeous. I absolutely love the look of this. So once we heat emboss it, it's going to be so fancy. And we're going to repeat here now with our just a nose. So again, into the Versamark ink, you want to make sure your Versamark pad is always really juicy, especially when you're heat embossing. So I need to line this up pretty straight. So I'm going to go right about there. But again, with the scripty cursive, there's a little bit of wiggle room, right? Because sometimes when people write, they slant their, their words, can slant upwards or downwards. These are things that actually happen. All right. I see that I got some extra ink. I probably touched my card stock at some point. So a little bit of extra powder, perhaps, right there. But other than that, this looks pretty good. Okay, I need to find my lid. I have already dropped too many things. Actually, this item right here, this was in my bin that hit the floor earlier. And thank God, it when it landed upside down, the lid stayed here on it. I did not lose powder today. But oh my goodness, I panicked completely when that went off sideways on me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just clip this up so I can easily heat this and not burn my fingers. I'm going to just grab my heat tool here. I'm going to check messages real quick while my heat tool is heating. Okay, Jess loves the purples. Oh yeah, Melissa, I love this script too. It's just gorgeous, so gorgeous. Okay, let's do the, the magic. I just love the Blackberry Bliss with the gold is really, really elegant. So we're going to start embossing this. <clears throat> You're going to see it run. I just love watching the the powder melt and it just looks like it's running into gold. Isn't that elegant and gorgeous? Love that. Okay, now we're going to do number two here. I'm just grabbing it with my hand so I can likewise do this piece. And I'm just moving my heat tool a little bit back and forth. I also angle it a little bit back and forth because the heat comes out of it. I don't want it to be like a direct always. I kind of angle it and move it around a little bit, but look at how beautiful. Let me turn that off. Oh my gosh, just gorgeous, right? Look at the gold. Um, it's just so rich and elegant. I mean, I love, love, love this. Now we are die cutting our little sea, the sea. This is seaweed type frown, right? This is seagrass. But now it kind of doesn't look so nautical, does it? It just looks like an everyday vine, perhaps, or, you know, something floral in nature. Now, when you heat emboss, the cardstock, it gets a little bent and wonky. So when you're die cutting this, if you're die cutting it like shortly after, if you, if you ha <clears throat> don't have time to flatten it a little bit under something heavy, I'll let the paper relax again. I'm definitely going to re recommend something on here. Now I have the mint tape, so I would tape that so that my die stays where I want it to stay. 
Of course, I die cut earlier, so I wouldn't have to do that part right now. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's just really pretty. So it's got that long, lean, frondy. It's just gorgeous. I love this very, very much. So I'm going to set these aside, and we're going to continue to put our card together over here. And we are... I set that aside and I need it. <laughs> I need my little frond. Now what's really nice about this frond is it comes along here on these circles. It just kind of hugs along the outside here of the circle for a little bit, just naturally. It perfectly curves right in here, which I love. So when I put the glue on here, I only glued it from the top of the circle to the bottom of the circle. And I left the top and bottom of the frond with no adhesive because basically these little pieces are going to kind of pop off the circle anyway. And I didn't want them to be like adhered down to the cascading piece and just look kind of funny. So there's a little bit of lift there, which is nice, right? It gives, it gives the card a little bit of fluidity, I think. And just like that, again, no dimensionals, just right on there, perfectly fine like that. And again, this one could, I could have put dimensionals on. Actually, you know what, now that I'm talking about it, I just talked myself into dimensionals. So we're gonna put dimensionals on. So when I show you the next card, I mean, when I show you the original card, you can let me know which one you like better. We're gonna pop three on there. I've decided. All this talk about, I didn't use any dimensionals today, just made me wanna use dimensionals. Oh my goodness. The power of the mind, right? So here we go. Now I want to make sure I'm putting just a note. I hope I have that correct. Yes, I do. Just a note is going to come on here just like this. So it's going to cover up just a little bit of our fronds, but it's also going to come over here to the edge of where the cascading moody mauve meets the card base. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. So let me pop in the original one here. Oh, maybe I do like it on dimensionals better. Okay, so here's the original. And I'm going to go ahead again and add these really awesome little loose sequins. So my favorite way to do this is just pick up a little pinch and just kind of drop them and see where they go. And then from there, I'm going to rearrange them and I'm going to glue them down. So let me grab out my tool again here. This is all about the gluing today. So actually I'm gonna pop one up this way. One of these guys needs to move up. They're all down there at the bottom. So this is kind of more of a, okay, so we used cascading ruffles, but we're also using a cascading sequin um, application. So these kind of, they come down here in an implied path and they just kind of, your eye goes from top to bottom as they're on here. So they kind of come down and around and they're, they're opaque enough and they're simple enough that they're not like jarringly like obvious that, you know, you've got all these sequins on here. I think this one might be upside down. We're gonna try it. So again, just little bits of glue. So these ones take a little bit longer than your adhesive back sequins, but it's so worth it. And these are great for shaker cards, too. Don't forget shaker cards. All right, pick this one up. Put this one down. And there we go. I'm going to not use this little guy right here. He's going to come off to the side. I'll grab him later. All right, let's put a couple more up here. I'm going to do two glue spots real quick just to pick up the pace here a little bit. Shift, <laughs> shift this one over here. And then we're gonna just do, got quite a few here. We're gonna do a couple up here. Just little bits of glue. Grab my tool here and pop them on. And see if I can get this teeny tiny one on here. There we go. So there's just an applied path here of the little adhesives going down, which is really pretty. And I do think I like the, um, I like the sentiment popped up. It really does give it a little bit of, of lift. And I'm, you know, I'm saying that like, it really does give it more lift, obviously lift, right? But super pretty, super cute. I didn't change anything up other than the dimensionals on the sentiment. It really does make a big difference. Who knew, right? Who knew that making, um, making something pop upwards. I don't know if it, if it shows up as much on screen as it does in person, but there we go. Oh yeah, Debbie says, flat cards are nice, but just a little pop up steps. It does step it up a notch, absolutely. Oh yeah, Christmas garland, that's a good idea, Melissa, for this uh, cascading ruffle folder. That's a really good idea, if you remember that. Um, so that is card number two. Definitely, it doesn't look like it came from this 
the stamp set that features things of nautical nature, right? But I wanted to show you that this nautical stamp set can be used for more than nautical cards. And I feel like this is just a really great, I think this would be a pretty good sympathy card too. I feel like this is just elegant enough and it's, it's you know, got enough of the nice tones here that this could be a sympathy card. So that is card number two. Let me clean up my little mess here and we're gonna pop onto card number three. Now card number three, super fun because it's my kid friend I'm calling it my kid friendly card um now of course you could probably send this card to kids of all ages right um and it's also a little bit of a play on the um clean and simple cards every now and again I like to try to do a clean and simple card so you've got your card kit here you've got the thick white card base so you see a lot of white. There's a lot of white going on here. You've got a pop of pumpkin pie and daffodil. You've got some really fun little jazzy paper. Of course, this comes from the, the Zany Zoo suite, but the back side gives us really generic patterns that can be used for so many projects. I did put in a pop of Parakeet Party. So again, this is um, a little bit of a look at some in colors. I should be separating these out. I wanna make one of each here right now. Let me grab out my parts and pieces set the other one aside you're getting this um embossed piece and this is the this is the twisted twisted rope i believe it's called twisted rope i don't know if i have out my yes i do twisted rope so of course with nautical themed right twisted rope so this looks like um nautical note not nautical rope <laughs> not nautical rope and then of course we've got all kinds of other little white papers in here there's a lot, again, a lot of white. So I wanted to show you what you're gonna be doing with all of these white papers, just in case you wanna make these card kits similarly to mine. Now they don't have to be exact, of course. They can be as creative as you want them to be. And I continue to find sequins on my desk because I've chosen to like pull some aside. All right, card base. I have a white card base. So there's a lot of white going on here. So let's put our bones together here real quick. We've got this really great pop of the parakeet party. Now when this in color came out last year, I I'm not, green is my favorite color, but this green, I just wasn't feeling it. I, I couldn't quite get, I couldn't quite understand it. I'm beginning to, we're beginning to be friends now. This parakeet party and I, we're getting along a little bit better. Let's just say that. It's bright and cheery. I'm starting to like enjoy it, which is really nice because, you know, in colors are only around for a short time. So we've got a nice mat here for our, our card base. And then we're going to pop these two pieces on. So I'm using the cute little black and white pokey dots or fish bubbles maybe on the top, right? So I'm gonna just layer this on here. I'm leaving the nice matted um, eighth inch around the, the three sides here, the top and the left and right side. And then I'm gonna bring in this piece right here. Now this is designed to go. So up, this is up and down, this this wouldn't fit, right? It's not the right size. So make sure your, your ropes are going across landscape style. Now this piece is meant to overlap, but you can cut this down and trim this if you prefer to have more of the bubbles showing. I gave you, I gave you a little bit of play, a little bit of leeway so that you can, you know, trim up a little bit if you like something different. Definitely, you know, take that into consideration. But they are the same width across. So as you layer them together, you're gonna to have the little pokey dots and you're gonna have the great um, embossed piece right here. And then as we're looking at these, all these white pieces, like what are we gonna do with all these white pieces? We're gonna take the one that is the narrowest and the same width here as our embossed piece, as our designer paper, and we're just putting this across here. I like to cover one end or the other. And in this, in this case, because the rope comes up higher, I'm actually putting this on the twisted rope piece. I'm just kind of adjusting it here a little bit. And there we go. So here's the bones of your card, right? You have this, you could probably run with this in all kinds of different directions, but we're doing some really fun things. We're gonna do a little stamping. So let's grab this piece, because this is one we're gonna stamp on, and we've got lots of things that we're gonna stamp. So let me grab them out. This is where we're gonna get into the little bitty stamps. So we're gonna use Sweet Sorbet, again, another in color. And this fish is so much fun because it's got that long, swirly, it almost looks like a tail, but obviously it's coming off of its back, right? So it's a fin, but it comes up and around. It is so much fun. I love that one. So we're doing that guy in the sweet sorbet. 
Then we're going to bring in uh, Parakeet Party. So again, this matches our, our layer on our card. And we're going to do this little sea urchin, which also, when I first looked at it, I thought, wow, this is kind of like, it reminds me of like either an ink splotch or maybe a firework. I feel like that could be used for other things. So there's our little sea urchin in Parakeet Party. And now we're going to bring in the blue fish. And we're doing Tahitian Tide. So these are all in colors that came out last year. We're playing with them together. And this time we're gonna do a little blue guy right here. So we've got some really bright, fun colors. Now these are gonna be die cut, of course, with our dies from our set here. So I'm just pull this over and show you that there is a die for this guy. And it's got the little curly tail that goes up. There is one for our blue fish, red fish, blue fish. I don't know if anybody out there reads Dr. Seuss, but um, this, is, this is kind of an ode to Dr. Seuss. And we have our little sea urchin right there. So there we have those three pieces. Those will get die cut. Now we're also going to take our additional dies, the seaweed dies, and I want you to take the orange one and die cut a little seaweed, and the yellow one and die cut another little splotch of seaweed. So these are all the things that you would be die cutting if um, you were going to create this card similar to mine. And when you get all done, I'm going to pop them out. They look like this. So you've got all your little fishes, your sea urchins, some little grassy greeny things here, except they're not green, right? We're going with some fun, bright colors because I wanted this to be a fun and bright card. So that is why we're, we're doing things a little bit differently there. Now I do want to use memento ink for my happy birthday sentiment and I chose the cute little cheery happy birthday here and I kept when I was looking at my sentiments and choosing I kept this small happy birthday. This is the smallest one that's on the set and I kept it because the scope of my little fishes are also small. So to put a huge happy birthday or a really big happy birthday with something small would look a little out of place. So when you're choosing sentiments from different stamp sets, that is something to keep in mind that you want to make sure that they kind of go together. Now, a lot of times when Stampin' Up! puts their sentiments and their, um, their stamps, their images together in one set, they typically, they look like they belong together. But when you're choosing a different sentiment to go with different stamps, you just want to make sure that these, this little happy birthday looks really nice with all of these little elements right here, right? So this all goes together in size. So that's why I chose this sentiment for this card. Now I am keeping the right side flat, but I'm going to trim up. I'm going to do the angle cut on the left side here. So I'm just going to trim it like that. And this is going to go on my card right here. So I, again, you can see with the happy birthday in black that it matches. It just looks really nice together, right? We've got a lot of white and black, a little pop of green. Now we're going to add all of our fun little elements. And for this, we are using a few dimensionals. So let me grab these guys back out. I've got some minis here because we have mini items right here, right? We're going to start with our little red, red fish. Um, I meant to tell you, when you die cut, there's little holes in the die and that's going to help you to line up your image so if you can see for example on this one if you when you die cut this you want to be able to see a little bit of red popping through those holes because it's going to tell you that you've got your tail you know pretty lined up sometimes it's hard to be exact but those little holes will help you as well so i'm putting a mini dimensional on the back of my little red fish just one that's all you need and the back of these ones don't come off as nice as the big ones. And this just, it feels like a little, a little handle here. This guy's going to come over here, right there, popping him on there. So <clears throat> for the orange and the daffodil um, little grasses, I'm going to go ahead and just only put a little bit of glue here on the bottom. Again, not gluing the whole thing down because only this much is going to be on this little strip right here. So you don't need to glue down the top. You can leave this loose, right? It can be fine, just like that. And then I'm going to kind of put, do the same thing here with the yellow. I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of glue here on the back. And this one's just gonna kind of crisscross over. So these guys are hanging out together just like that. And then I'm gonna bring in the rest of my little sea critters here with more dimensionals. So they're getting popped up, but the seaweeds or the grasses are staying flat because it really would be difficult to um, to get a dimensional underneath those other items. So here's our little green sea urchin. So he's gonna come in right here, right there in the middle. And then we have our little blue fish. And how cute is this? 
I just think this is a really cute card. Now make sure when you're doing your bluefish that you have his, his eye is over here, his tail is over here. So it, it just seems like you would want to put him upside down maybe, but he needs to be right side up. He should be swimming correctly. And all the, the fish are kind of swimming this way, left to right. They're going left to right right now. And I left a little bit. Michelle would be proud of me because I know we just had a class together. And she's like, I have to make sure if I have space on this end, I have space on this end. And it, it makes perfect sense to me um, because you get more of a balance that way. So if you're, if you're going across there, you want to make sure you're balancing everything. Now this, again, this, this sentiment, I could have popped it up, but I did leave it flat. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to leave it flat. I'm also kind of snugging it up here. So I left the right side flat and straight so it kind of lines up there. I'm just bumping it up right here underneath this other white piece of trim here that we have. And now all we need is our little fun elements. So this is what it looks like here. So they kind of look like little bubbles going up through, right? So we are going to put a few more of these fun little embellishments on here. And again, these are great for shaker cards. So I'm just going to, I sprinkle some, it's fun. It's kind of like, it's kind of like decorating Christmas cookies, right? You sprinkle them on, they go where they go. They, some of them stick, some of them don't, right? So um, that's just kind of how this works. I need my, my pick tool. I picked that up with my hand and I was like, that is not going to work. So the pick tool is really a perfect tool to get here for this. So we're just going to put a few of these little drops of glue on here. And I'm going to pop these on here. This looks like a half of a, looks like that sequin has a chunk out of it. So you get the idea here how, I mean, really, it's not difficult to get these little sequins on here. You just have to be really careful to only get out a little bit of glue. The tinier sequins are a little bit more fussy to work with, but they're so worth it. And I say that as it sticks to my finger. They're so worth it. They're really cute. Okay, we'll get that one on there. We'll do a couple more up here, and then I'll pop over and just see how everybody's doing. Which card is your favorite tonight? This is just a really fun little set. Um, definitely not like the not definitely not the samples in the catalog because I went really different with some of these. I really like how some of these little bubbly things are. Did I lose a bubble though? I have one there. My goodness. Then it becomes hard to tell where are the bubbles already. Now I didn't put the I didn't put these sequins on the top with the black and the white paper because I felt like they really would disappear out of there and not be seen quite as much. All right, I think I have a couple more on there, but we'll just save these little guys for another time. See if I can pop them back into my container. These guys get everywhere. But again, there's a lot in here. They're great for shaker cards definitely awesome all right so let's get all of our cards out tonight we've got our cute little fishy card right here very simple you know a lot of nice clean and simple right we had our very elegant super elegant and I'm calling this a feminine card because it's it's got just the, the purples and pinks and then we have our really I'm calling this the masculine card right this masculine card is definitely more um you know, grays and blues. So I kind of, I tried to hit like cards for everybody here in our card class tonight. And I think I did a pretty good job. So let me check over and see how everybody's doing. Um, transitioning. There we go. I am back. All right. Awesome. The fish are cheerful. Thanks, Jess. That is a really good way to say that. The fish are cheerful. They're cute. Obviously, you could change up the fish colors. If you're stamping fish, you could change them up. Aw, thanks, Debbie. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, the fish are super cute. I feel like I called it a kid card, but I mean, we're all kids, right? I'm a kid. Um, you could give this to anybody. It's a cute card. It's a. It's definitely a pick-me-up card. If you need to send somebody something cheery, it's just, it's really cute. It's not super like critter cutesy but it is it's just kind of fun and cute so this was a really great card class how do we do on time we did really amazing on time so um that is my card class for today of course if you come over and um, patty likes the blue card that's actually i think my favorite i made the blue card first and i thought wow this class is done i made a beautiful card and i'm like no i gotta make two more cards um i love that blue one too it's just so traditional and gorgeous i like those colors together as well um join me on thursday so if we're um, 
I should say right here. Join me Thursday right here at three o'clock for my Thursday at three. I try, try to do a fun fold or a fun card on Thursday at three and I will be doing a color swap. So one of these cards that you watch tonight will be a color swap and I will share that on Positive Paper Crafters on Wednesday so you get to vote who wore it better. So when I do a color swap, I take a card that I made and I usually use the same exact design, but I change the colors. So maybe we won't have a pink card. Maybe we'll have a color that is different from pink. Or maybe we won't have the red and, and blue fish. Maybe we'll have different color fish. So you can kind of see where I'm going with that. I haven't picked which one yet. I'm going to swap colors on, but it's always so much fun. And I love to see how you guys vote. That's like the most fun for me. Besides creating cards, is just to see which one you guys actually like better. So if you need any of these card kits. Don't forget to put in your qualifying order this week. If you have any questions on that, I can help you. There is kit sale going on with Stampin' Up! 15% off kits this month. Don't forget your bonus bucks are going to expire at the end of August. So we're almost to the middle of August. Make sure you get your bonus bucks used by the 31st because they do not carry over. If September 1 comes and you didn't use them, you don't get to use them in September. Um, and also I might be doing an unboxing this week with the new holiday catalog which I think is still downstairs. Um, but I did get a box in today from UPS earlier. I have a box to open and I have the holiday catalogs to pop into the mail. Now, if you've ordered with me in the last six months, you're getting a catalog unless you tell me I don't need a catalog. I am already a demonstrator. I already um, have a demonstrator. Just let me know and I won't pop a catalog in the mail to you. But otherwise, you're gonna be seeing a catalog soon. If you want a catalog, let me know. We'll talk about all the great details. The new catalog is fantastic. You've probably seen other demonstrators unboxing. I'll be doing that soon. And I'm so excited to dive in to the Christmas good stuff. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your comments. I'll go back through and read them in case anyone had any questions on this class and until next time stay inspired create something beautiful and share the love bye everybody